America and welcome back. It's another Wednesday evening here. It's 9 p.m. in the east, 6 p.m. out there on the left-handed coast. I am Michael Woody O'Brien, your host for the next hour. This is the AbolishFiatSlavery.com hour here on the Rents Radio Network and Wide Awake News. Great to be with you again. Uh, I am not just a radio uh, host. I am also a small-scale organic farmer and a economist with 33 years' experience on Wall Street, now writing investment newsletters. So you can presume I know a little bit about organic food, know a lot about uh, economics, and that's basically the approach of the show is to educate people, to teach them about our system of fiat slavery of the Federal Reserve, which is really my life's work, is to watch the Federal Reserve be abolished and to pee on its grave. I also want to mention right up front tonight, I really appreciate all the feedback I've been getting from listeners of this show, people who have uh, been friending me on Facebook and sending me notes there, also visiting my websites, abolishfiatslavery.com and my day job, WoodyKnowsMarkets.com. And speaking of my day job, I have to tell you, I know an awful lot of fans of the Rents Radio Network are investors in bullion, in gold and silver, and also in the mining shares. And I do want to give you a little bit of a, uh, a more of a heads up than anything else. And to tell you, we all remember those movies where people ask, is it safe to go back in the water? Or is the shark going to bite you again? And boy, that really has been the bullion market and the market for mining shares in the past two years. But I'm going to tell you, I'm going to stand up here on this fetch the lifeguard and say, yes, it's safe to go back into the water. The action that we're seeing now in bullion markets is telling the technical analyst geeks like me that, yes, indeed, you have seen the low in 2013. In the price of copper, the price of silver, the price of gold, uh, the price of lots of rare earth metals. Uh, and it, it, if you don't own any metals, boy, it's it's almost an IQ test to, to buy some here. I think we are going back into the 30, 40, 50, eventually 60 and 70 dollars on silver with gold. My minimum number I think we've got to get to in the next couple of years is 35 35 we're going to get to 103 dollars on silver and that those numbers will just take us back to how much money we knew the federal reserve and its criminal leader benjamin bernanke had created back in 2008 when they stopped publishing the m3 uh, total money supply number so keep that in mind mark your calendars woody o'brien says it's safe to get back in the water here If you don't own any bullion, look at the mining stocks first because they are just ridiculously cheap, as cheap as they were in in 2008 in real terms. I actually think we're going to have a period here where the mining shares are going to have dramatic advances. I might not run right out tomorrow and buy the GDX uh, or the SIL, which is the silver miners, but I certainly would be buying any pullbacks that you have here because, again, the worst is over. It's it's time to uh, to get in. I have to tell you, there's, there was something that was in the news today that really just drove me crazy, and that's the story about Jesse Jackson Jr. and his wife are going to jail because they used campaign money for personal use. Now, I have to tell you, if every congressman who ever – spent their campaign money lavishly on themselves, went to jail, there would be no one in Washington. That might be a good idea. 
if you're dumb enough to give Jackson Jr. a paying contribution of this, of him getting uh, time in jail for, uh, I, I guess, misappropriating would be the correct word, several hundred thousand dollars of campaign money. As bad as that is, I want you to think about for a second, why, 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 why is that same standard not applied to bankers who've wasted uh, billions, tens of billions, hundreds of billions of dollars? How come not a single one of them is going to jail? How come a single one of them is not in handcuffs? And the answer is quite simple, because... The fact that bankers don't go to jail is really the poker tell of our financial system. It's the thing that lets you know the system is rigged. If anyone ever goes to jail in anything related to investment or banking, it's usually some small fish. You're not going to see handcuffs on on uh, on Jamie Dimon or on Victor Pandit over at Citibank or on um, anyone from Goldman Sachs like Lloyd Blankfein or Brian Monaghan out at at Bank of America. The big banksters are basically like bald eagles. They are a protected species. A congressman can go to jail, but the head of a New York money center bank just can't. And I, I think this shows you the number one fact of American life that people don't want to deal with, and that is our democracy is a lie. There's no such thing as political reform. The, the politicians are talking about the same balance the budget baloney that they've been talking about since 1959, and I was born. There is no possibility of political reform. And as Kennedy once said, when there is no possibility of peaceful reform, of peaceful change, you're just making violent change inevitable. And and that certainly is my prediction that we are going to see in coming years some type of complete collapse of the global Ponzi scheme that is dollar domination. And a period of time of five to ten years in American life that if you're not ready to live like the Amish of Lancaster County without electricity and without the just-in-time food system that we have now, well, you're going to have to learn to live with that in a hurry. You're going to have to learn to pump water. You're going to have to learn to grow your own food because when it all comes crashing down, if you're not prepared to change your life, if you don't have the tools to change your life, you could very easily end up dead, starving to death or dehydrated. Because the one thing that I think people, I, I love to watch these shows, the doomsday prepper shows. And when we come back from the break, we're going to talk a little bit more about this, but I want to touch on it a little bit now. Every person who fears some kind of disaster, who is prepping for it, really has four things that they have to think about. They have to think about their security. They have to think about their location. They have to think about food. And they have to think about water. And as much as I love the Doomsday Prepper shows, most of the people who are in that show think about security first. In fact, of those four things, food, water, location, and security, security is probably the least important. And the reason is, if you're in the wrong location, if you and your family of four have a 100 guns and a million rounds of ammunition, but you're surrounded by a hundred thousand people in some city or suburb. Uh, you know what? All those guns aren't going to help you. You're going to be overrun. If you're far enough out in the country where most people are going to get to you, you're not really going to need too many guns and rounds of ammunition. Uh, as they say in real estate, location, location, location. Why people have a bug out place, uh, is beyond me. Live at your bug out place. That's my, that's my rule of thumb, because your personal security depends entirely on your location. Your quality of life is really about population density, how many people are around you. If you live in a city and you're surrounded by a million people, you're really already dead if something goes wrong in the society. 
if you're like me and you live out in a rural state like West Virginia in a little town of a thousand people where you know half the people, um, I'm going to live to die an old man in bed. And I don't really need to have a million rounds of ammunition or dozens of guns because there's not very many people in America who are fit enough to make it to the countryside to even assault the people who are prepared. When we come back from the break, we're going to talk a little bit more about this prepping idea. I'm Michael Woody O'Brien, and this is the Abolish Fiat Slavery Hour on Rents Radio Network and Wide Awake News. We'll be right back. Charlie McGrath of WideAwakeNews.com here with a question from my friends at Austin Rare Coins and Bullion. What do they know that we don't? Insiders and a who's who list of elite have made it crystal clear that we are headed for catastrophe, putting out warning after warning, urging people to batten down the hatches. Billionaire George Soros has recently been dumping stocks and at the same time acquiring millions in gold. In fact, in a recent interview, he was quoted as saying, I'm not here to cheer you up. The situation is as serious and difficult as I've experienced in my career. Out of control government deficit spending and a Federal Reserve that's only solution seems to be print more fiat currency will lead to a weaker dollar and massive inflation on necessity items such as energy and food. If you have wealth to protect, please visit my friends at Austin Rare Coins and Bullion. Gabe Elton and the folks at Austin Rare Coins and Bullion have many wide awake news customers because they're honest, they're fair, and they won't sell you paper promises or product they do not have. Call Gabe Elton at 800-552-4109. That number again, 800-552-4109. Or visit them online at austincoins.com. Dr. Joe Schneller. The efficacy that we're looking for, that we're going to prove, is that carnivora wakes up this immune system and makes it dominant. Pastor Lindsay Williams. I'm 77 years of age. Uh, I feel better than I did when I was in my 50s and 60s. I was so sick, I thought I was going to die. It relates to a product that you handle right here. Folks, you positively must, after this show, you've got to click on carnivora. They, they must have it in their medicine cabinet. That's C-A-R-N-I-V-O-R-A dot com. Call 1-866-VENUS-FLY. That's 866-VENUS-FLY. 1-866-836-8735. That's 1-866-836-8735. Or visit C-A-R-N-I-V-O-R-A dot com. That's carnivora dot com. And order now. Hi, this is Jeff Rents. Royal Raymond Reif was without question the most gifted medical scientific genius of our age. He discovered that most disease-related microbes die quickly when exposed to their own specialized resonant radio frequencies. The BCX411 Reif type frequency instrument has received the highest praise on several continents for its precision, simplicity of operation, and successful research experiment. The BCX, with its comprehensive manual, allows you to select the frequencies you wish to experiment with for the length of time you want to run them. The BCX handheld plasma ray tubes and RF radio carrier wave, like Rife used, are the absolute state of the art in Rife frequency research. For full information and pictures, take the New Earth link at the top of rents.com. Settle for nothing but the best in Rife research with the BCX 411. Again, just take the New Earth link at the top left corner of rents.com. And we are back. I am Michael Woody O'Brien, your host. This is the Abolish Fiat Slavery Hour here on the Rents Radio Network and Wide Awake News, uh, run by my buddy, friend, and pal, Charlie McGrath. Always appreciate, want to give a shout out to Charlie and say thank you for him to, uh, for allowing me to sit here and entertain you for the hour every Wednesday night, 9 p.m. Eastern Time, uh, uh, 6 p- uh, p.m. California Time. From here at my promised land organic farm in Shepherdstown, West Virginia. 
out in the middle of the country, I would say it's a uh, hundred miles from the White House, so they better be careful. I'm not too uh, too far away. Before the break, we were talking a little bit about prepping and uh, about this Doomsday Prepper show, which I have to confess it it is a guilty pre- pleasure, even though I think the people, most of the people who want it, are are completely wrong. Because in fact, if you're going to be a prepper. Your location is the most important thing. That population density. How far away are you from population centers? Because that's not just the most important factor in the quality of your life. In our pre-crash world, it's going to be the only factor that's going to matter in the post-crash world. Are you out in the countryside like I am and uh, working over the Internet or having a job that you can commute to? Because... If you're doing that, you're doing the most important thing of prepping, which is being far away from other people. Because let's face it, a third of all adults are obese. Another sixth of adults are close enough. They're not going to be able to go 20 miles without water or fuel or food or supplies. So if you're out in the country, you're in a pretty safe place. The second thing is water. People don't realize without water in 100 hours, you're dead. It takes 200 hours to starve to death. Water is the core of our life as human beings. And 99.99% of Americans depend on electric power in order to have fresh water. That water doesn't come through the pipes because of gravity. It comes through because of electricity. And if you don't have a way to have potable water, drinkable water, uh, you could be dead in 100 hours. Uh, and the truth is, for people who collect dozens of guns and massive amounts of silver bars and uh, silver coins, although that's a perfectly great thing to invest in for the long term, I will tell you that a well with a hand pump isn't just worth its weight in gold. It's worth its weight in plutonium. Because with a well with a hand pump, you can save the lives of hundreds of people. This idea that you're going to need silver or other things to barter. If you have water, water is going to be precious and collapse. If you have a well with a hand pump, boy, I'll tell you, you're going to have anybody be able to give you anything that they, that you need because, uh, water is the most important thing. Then of course, food, uh, People should have at least a year's worth of food, preferably freeze-dried food and and seeds, because in a post-collapse world, we're all going to have to be able to feed ourselves. We're going to have to be able to raise chickens and and grow crops and fish and hunt until some semblance of a normal currency and normal life returns to uh, America. So I would tell you, if you're thinking about prepping, it's location first. It's water second, it's food third. And the last thing is security. Because the truth is, in a real collapse environment, someone like me who's out in the country, if someone from Arlington or Chevy Chase, Maryland, manages to make it all the way out here to me, I'm not very likely to shoot them in a collapsed world. I'm likely to see what they know, see what they saw on the way, see what intelligence they have. And if they're a person who had the physical ability to get out all the way out to here, I'm much more likely to invite them to stay and say, will you help me farm for food? Because I've got 27 acres. I'm going to, if I don't have any fuel, I have to uh, farm all this with horses and mules and old fashioned plows like people did 150 years ago. I'm going to need help to do that. So I, I think you have to think outside the box and think of people as resources, as well as food and water and security. People are resources. Anyhow, uh, again, my name is Michael Woody O'Brien. I'm an investment newsletter writer. I run a website called WoodyKnowsMarkets.com. I just retired last year from 33 years as a investment broker and economist with a, a Wall Street dirt, uh, firm, know so much about investments and mutual funds and exchange traded funds and uh, the stock market and will tell anybody, boy, this is a moment you should be really worried if you're invested in the S&P 500 because this is a moment for which collapse could
could happen at any time. By the way, I also wanted to mention on tonight's show, there's a new poll out about all these spying scandals, about Edward Snowden and the uh, NSA scandal. And the, as I read these polls, uh, the one Quinnipiac poll that came out today, it says that 56% of Americans do not think the NSA is telling the truth about unconstitutional spying. And 59% of the people disapprove of the spying, while only 35% approve of it. And I found myself saying, who are these 35% who think it is first okay for the government to spy on you? Are these people who really think that, one, this is an effective use of their money? Because most of this data spying is useful after something would happen. We're going to talk more about this when we come back on the other side. I'm Michael Woody O'Brien. This is the Abolish Fiat Slavery.com hour here on Rents Radio Network and Wide Awake News, and we will be right back. You're listening to Charlie nationwide and worldwide on the internet on the Rents Radio Network. Is what you are currently doing to relieve your pain working for you? Do you have chronic pain in your knees, your elbows, your joints, your back, your muscles? Have you tried going to the doctors and the naturopathic doctors, the back cracks, the motions, the potions, the lotions, and nothing seems to really last? There's a new product called a placebo enhancer. Now, don't laugh. The name is to avoid tyranny from the drug cartels that want to keep everybody on a leash. This product is advanced science. It's cutting edge. It's quantum physics-based energy-infused liquid suspension with a transdermal magnesium applicant. You spray a couple sprays on where it hurts, and that's all you have to do. And within 20 minutes, it's in every one of your cells. Go to painsucks.info and get the information. That's painsucks.info. Again, you can get a free trial bottle. Just pay shipping and handling at painsucks.info. Your pain isn't going to go away on its own, so get your trial bottle immediately. Painsucks.info. Heart-related health problems affect millions of people each year. Maybe you're one of the many who suffer from issues related to angina pain, high blood pressure, congestive heart failure, unbalanced cholesterol, irregular heartbeat, or clogged arteries. There is a solution that doesn't involve expensive prescription drugs that only mask the problem and leave you with horrible side effects. If you are ready to live your life free of sickness, pain, and fear, live your life with increased vitality, energy, and youthfulness, and experience Experience your body healing itself. Then you're ready for Heart and Body Extract from Healthy Hearts Club. Heart and Body Extract has a 23-year proven track record of using certified organic herbs that make up an excellent formula to balance and support the heart and circulatory system. In as little as two weeks, you can feel amazing results when your two-month supply of Heart and Body Extract today. Call 1-866-295-5305 or go to hbextract.com. And we're back. I'm Michael Woody O'Brien, your host. This is the Abolish Fiat Slavery.com hour here on the Rents Radio Network and Wide Awake News. Before the break, we were just starting to talk about there's now polling data about this Snowden NSA scandal. And the latest poll shows that basically the American people don't believe what the government is telling them so far. And, and you know, I have to confess – the government and President Obama aren't doing anything to change that. Every time President Obama speaks about this, he says something which everybody knows is blatantly untrue. 
like saying, oh, we're not really spying on Americans unless, of course, they're doing this or unless they're doing this or unless they're doing this, unless they're doing this. And you add up the exceptions and you realize, yeah, they're spying on everyone about everything. And of course, that's illegal. Someone who's my age, I'm 54 years old. I remember Richard Nixon got kicked out of being president for wiretapping a couple of his political enemies. This guy's wiretapped the entire country and our financially dominated Congress. No mention of impeachment over this. No mention of impeachment over Benghazi. No mention of impeachment over the IRS uh, targeting scandals. No mention of impeachment whatsoever. It, it's, it's just tragic. And I have to tell you, there's a part of me, and I will confess I am a former hockey player for decades and decades and decades. And I'm a little surprised that when people have the opportunity to have a national, a natural platform to talk about these things, that they don't really just drop the gloves and go. They can't seem to find their inner hockey player. Today, it was announced that uh, Bradley Manning, in his sentencing statement, apologized for hurting the U.S. Apologize? Are you kidding me, bro? You shouldn't apologize at all. Own what you did. Own it. Be proud of what you did. You, uh, Bradley Manning is a hero. He should not apologize to anybody. He saved the lives of many innocent people by outing the, f the fact that the U.S. military was just slaughtering innocent people. Uh, Snowden's father was on TV and was asked what he thought about President Obama's recent statements. And he almost used a cheerleader's powder puff and said, well, the president isn't being completely frank. Hey, look, when you get that opportunity and you're on a national stage, and you get to tug on Superman's cape, brother, you better have your best haymaker ready. You better just punch his lights out. I don't know why anybody who has a national audience, I wish I had one, because I'll tell you what I would stand up and say. I'd stand up and say, my Irish cousin, Barack Obama, is a liar. He's a disgrace to every Irish person uh, that there is. Because he can't tell the truth about this because he's a liar and he's a puppet of these uh, banking oligarchs. Why can't these people, when they're given the opportunity and to stand toe to toe with the powerful elite, swing away, drop it like a hockey game. If someone takes a shot at you, drop the gloves and let them know that there is a cost to that. Why can't the, the media, why can't the congressional leadership why can't people like Snowden's father, why can't Bradley Manning bite back, you know, and, and the truth is, it's, this is what the American people want to see. This, this, I love Ron Paul, but this is one of my great difficulties with Ron Paul, is I never got a sense that Ron Paul was in touch with his inner hockey player. That part of, uh, of all of us that just wants to get up and scream at these criminals in Washington who are doing what it is they're doing. I, I want to hear someone say to, to President Obama, why don't you resign so we don't have to put the country through throwing your ass in jail? Of course, that might not necessarily happen. But the truth is, is that somebody needs to call these people out and they need to be called out in a very, very big way. Because what happens is this powder puppy argument where it's like girls fighting with a pillow that we uh, get to witness here is that essentially it allows the intellectual argument over this to degrade over questions like, well, does this make us safer? It doesn't matter if it makes us safer. It's illegal. It's illegal to spy on someone without a warrant. Uh, just last week or maybe two weeks ago, I walked into my local courthouse for the first time. I recently uh, just moved, bought this farm last December, and had to go into the tax office to take care of some business there. And I walked through the door, and here it is, a uh, scanner that they want me to walk through. 
And I'm standing there staring at him. And the guy says, is there a problem? And I said, no, not if you have a warrant, there isn't. He says, I don't need a warrant. I said, if this is the United States of America, yes, in fact, you do. I said, you need to have probable cause and a signature of a judge that gives you the permission to, to, to search me on the premise I've done some crime. I said, because the people in this building aren't any more important than the people at Walmart. And he said, well, you don't have to come in. I said, how do I uh, take care of my business with a county if I can't get into a building without being warrantly searched? And he, he just looked at me and he said, well, if you want to come in the building, you have to do that. And I said to him, well, you know what? Don't ever call yourself a law enforcement officer anymore. I said, because you're violating the law. You're violating your oath to the Constitution. And I said, I want to come in this building without having a warrantless uh, search. And, of course, that wasn't possible. It, we have to, as a society, start to call out criminals for what they are. Criminals. Use that term. Use the most abrupt language. Because the truth is, they're not expecting it. They're used to us being sheep. And we need to be the wolves. We need to be the ones that are pursuing them. Snowden's father needs to call out Obama. Bradley Manning needs to not apologize. The only thing we really do have to fear is that the fear itself, the fear that we're going to say something that's going to offend someone. Well, I got news for you. All of us offend someone every single day. When we come back from the break, we're going to talk about this ridiculous story of the Obama rodeo clown. Apparently, out in the Midwest someplace, somebody who was a rodeo clown put on an Obama mask and now gets a lifetime ban. You know what? I think the president of the United States can can take a little uh, ribbing that he's a clown because, in fact, he, he is a clown. We live in a society where no one wants to offend anyone else. And this is one of the ways that the government and the banks and the corporations and Monsanto and Halliburton and all the rest of the evil empire of the U.S. can get away with what they want because we are not in touch with our inner hockey player. We're afraid to stand up. We're afraid to speak. I wonder what would happen if a drone was flown over most neighborhoods in the U.S. or most farms. What would people do? They'd probably take pictures and post it on YouTube and go, isn't that cool? I got news for you. I have an Air Force base six miles away in Martinsburg, West Virginia. I'm dying for them to fly a drone over my farm. I'm out on the farm every single day, a couple times a day, with a 12-gauge shotgun uh, looking to exterminate groundhogs who, uh, who eat my crops. And I'll tell you what, if a drone comes over my farm, I am going to shoot it down. And I'm not going to be afraid to do that. And I'm not going to ever apologize if I get the opportunity to do that because the government doesn't have the right to, to fly a drone over my property to spy on me. Americans need to find their spine. They need to find their inner hockey player. They need to stand up and say, hell no. We will not take it anymore. We will not be silent. We will not be polite. I wish I had a dollar for every time I called out a politician in a local uh, uh, town meeting or county meeting or other circumstances and looked them right in the eye without any fear and said, you're a criminal. You're a criminal. Or said to a, uh, a law enforcement officer who wanted to do a warrantless search, you're a criminal. We need to find our inner courage. We need to confront the evil of Uncle Scam and states and localities who are basically crime families organized for crime. When we come back from the break, I'm going to tell you a little bit about an experience I recently had, which speaks exactly and directly to this point, that government is nothing more than organized crime. I'm Michael Woody O'Brien. This is the Abolish Fiat Slavery Hour here on Reds Radio Network and Wide Awake News. We will be right back.
Hey guys, Charlie McGrath here at WideAwakeNews.com, and I'm here to tell you I believe that Chris and the folks over at SeedsNow.com offer the best product at the best prices with the best service of anybody in the market. But don't take my word for it. Listen to what some of their customers have to say. Joshua in Florida writes, exceeded my expectations. Shipping was prompt and a number of my plants are already starting to sprout. Thanks for being great. And Ryan in California writes, I just received my Homestead Seed Bank, my all-in-one prepper pack, and seed to seed storage and growing guidebook, and I could not be more pleased. Thanks, Seeds Now. Now I can start growing and get off the GMOs. Keep up the great work. And the list goes on and on. Guys, it's time to make SeedsNow.com an integral part of your long-term preparedness strategy. Please call them at 877 344 Four six six nine. That number again, 877-344-4669. Or better yet, visit them today at SeedsNow.com. If you're taking one, two, five, or more nutritional supplements every day, please stop. Simplify your supplementation with Bio Superfood, the most advanced nutritional whole food supplement you can buy. Men, women, children, and even Olympic athletes the world over have discovered Bio Superfood from BioAge.com and now take just one nutritional supplement instead of many. The Bio Superfood formulas are whole food products composed with four of the most nutrient dense algae species found on Earth. Bio Superfood for the Brain helps with focus, memory, clarity, and mood. Bio Superfood is a strong defender in the fight against radiation exposure. Bio Superfood has zero toxicity, is safe, and has no contraindications whatsoever. Learn more and order your Bio Superfood formulas at BioAge.com. That's spelled B I O A G E.com. BioAge.com. Or you can call 877 288 9116. That's 877 288 9116. BioAge, the age of advanced organics. Are you prepared for the future? Do you know how to navigate past the upcoming dangers before it's too late and seize budding opportunities before others do? Forecasting worldwide since 1980, Gerald Salenti, publisher of the Trends Journal, provides timely and accurate trend forecasts that have earned him the reputation as the most trusted name in trends. The proof is in the hundreds of accurate forecasts Salenti has made over the past 30 years. The 1987 stock market crash, the clean food trend, the dot-com bust. The Trends Journal alerts subscribers to early subtle signs of crucial trends that will shape our future. It allows readers to anticipate change, recognize the implications, and take proactive strategies. Put your money where your mind is with Gerald Salenti's brilliant and indispensable Trends Journal. Go to TrendsJournal.com or call 845-331-3500. That's 845-331-3500. Make a promise, take a vow, and trust your fears, it's easy now. Understand the voice within, and feel it change. And we are back. I'm Michael Woody O'Brien. This is the Abolish Fiat Slavery dot com hour here on Rents Radio Network and Wide Awake News. I understand we have a caller to the show. Gary is on the line. Go ahead, Gary. Well, hey Woody, I'm uh, following your discussion. You know, and I, I, I probably already missed the boat because you know I, 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 w- I wanted to nag you a little bit about uh, the the prepping issue. Can we can we backtrack to that one? Sure, let's, done with that let's, issue. No, let's go back and we'll go to prepping. What, what, what do you want to take up? Well, you know, uh, there's a lot of us poor schmucks who can't just walk away from our livelihood in the, uh, uh, in the city. I, you know, I've, I've done the best I can to get myself out of the major metropolitan area, but I can tell you from, from where I live, I can smell the Congress. Okay, when the wind blows from north to south, I can smell the Congress. So, you know, it, 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 do you have any advice for those of us? You know, my livelihood depends on me being close to the beltway. I would love to find that little piece of dirt someplace out in the country where I would happily pour me a concrete slab and drop a double wide so I could get out of here. But, you know, I still got. I still got responsibilities that require that I make a living. Do you have any suggestions for those of us who are very much aware 
that it's about to hit the fan and would prefer not to get any more of it on us than we absolutely have to. Any any advice for those of us who can't follow your lead and move out to the country in West Virginia? Uh, I, I think the the best advice that I can give is is if you are your life is situated to a point where you are in an area where you recognize you're in great danger Boy, rehearse every escape route that you possibly can. Know every shortcut. Know every back way out of the city, out of the suburbs. There's uh, there's a thousand ways to get to every places, and I, I you probably ought to know 500 of them. Know how traffic patterns uh, work, and you know practice. Do, do a, a, a bug out hey, drill. I got- I got my I got my bicycle and my dual backpacks for my bicycle. I got my black pajamas and I got a map of the train tracks. Uh, does that sound like a plan? Uh, that that sounds like a pretty good plan because I think train tracks are going to be one of the ways that that people are going to be able to walk right out uh, and and maybe get around uh, uh, roadblocks. But I think that the the, the other thing I would suggest is if if you get that feeling like the hair rising back on your neck that not just every day we're getting one day closer but we're getting sequentially closer the temperature in the room what when you really feel like collapse is days away get a head start get out before you know use your vacation time use your your sick leave if if you if you think it could all hit the fan on monday uh, don't wait till Sunday night to uh, to bug out and get out of where it is that you're at. Because one of the things that I think is going to be a very common denominator is if you're in a big city that has a beltway, uh, that beltway can be cut off so easily and basically trap everybody inside of it. So that'd be my first thing is if if you think it's all going to hit the fan at 9 a.m. on on uh, on Monday morning, boy, that's a day to call in sick and, and be uh, outside the city. But, yeah, I, I think – you, you have the right idea, and the most important thing is, Gary, you're afraid. Because fear in this subject is not just a good thing. It's a great thing because it's going to cause people to to make preparations they wouldn't be if they weren't afraid. I hear you. I appreciate you entertaining the argument. And, uh, you know, I'm sorry if I got you off track. seemed like you were, you, you'd already moved off of that topic no. and were on to something else. But, you know, you... you <sighs> You, you you bit my bottom telling me that, uh, you know, the only way I'm going to make it is if I get out of the city. Man, I can't do that just yet. You know, maybe five years from now. If it holds together for five years, I'll be in good shape. <laughs> what, 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 what kind of business are you in that you're tied to the city like that? Well, I, I am an independent computer consultant. I do small business computer systems for small businesses around the Beltway that have maybe 100 users or less. Or less. And, uh, you know, I, I have... 40 years of clientele built up where I am yeah. right now. So it's, it's not a business that could easily be picked up and moved to a rural location. I depend on the small businesses around the Beltway uh, to, to make a living. And unfortunately, well, I've still got you know kids with college bills to pay. Yeah. In, a, in a post-collapse world, you're going to be uh, like me. You're going to be unemployed because I would say in a, in a post-collapse world, no one's going to be a stockbroker. Uh, no one's going to need a stockbroker. No one's going to need to follow investment advice. Their 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 main mission in life is to going to be how do, how do I eat and how do I continue to have food. So uh, I, I I would say Gary, you're you're one of the future farmers of America because you have an occupation that very well uh, might not exist. But you're right. You you have something that is location dependent. Now it sounds like you're actually going to clients' locations and and doing work. But uh, if if you are trapped in that way for the moment. The answer is uh, have as many escape routes as possible and, and, and don't wait till it's obvious. Hey, Gary, I appreciate your call. My pleasure. What do you have a good one? Good night. Okay. Take care now. Yeah, that, that actually is a, a great point that uh, a lot of people have employment that is location sensitive. And if you're stuck in that way, uh, the question is, what are your escape routes? What's your plan to get out to be able to get to some place that's, uh, that's going to be a little bit safer? Well, before the break, we were talking a little bit about government and getting our anger up to deal with government. I want to tell you a quick story before we go, because we're almost getting to the, the, uh, the end of our hour here. I recently had an experience where I bought an additional 10 acres of land for my farm and I bought it from someone who was a developer, and he had it zoned as a subdivision. 
And the taxes for this property as farming is $29 a year. The taxes for property as subdivision is $2,400 a year. Well, I bought the property and I was at the closing and I said to everyone there, so what do I have to do to get the county to change my zoning to farming? Because I own the land that was right next to it. This was just going to be more uh, open field for my farm. There wasn't anything on it at all. And they just said, well, yeah, they'll know in a couple of days of the closing this land, but they probably won't change your tax uh, uh, status for a year. And I said, well, how could that be? And they just looked at each other and just kind of laughed. Well, here I found out that the county that I bought this uh, property in will continue to tax me at the subdivision rate, even though I'm not a developer and I'm not a subdivision, for nearly two years. That they will put bills in the mail to me for taxes that they know are wrong. And they will put them through the U.S. Postal Service, which is mail fraud. And when I complained about this and pointed out that this is indeed mail fraud, they're kind of like, yeah, you know what? We don't really care. And I said, well, aren't I entitled to pay the correct tax on a property I own? And I went, no, because this is how we're set up to do it. And I'm like, well, that doesn't empower you to commit mail fraud. And their basic response is, yes, it does. Government has figured out just how much it can steal from you that it doesn't pay for you to fight. It'll cost me five to ten thousand dollars to fight over this twenty four hundred bucks. And eventually I'll end up getting taxed at the farm rate, which is twenty nine dollars per year. But that'll be two years from now. And in the meantime, I'll have to fork over the better part of five thousand dollars, which is blatantly just theft. And the truth is they just don't care. And their attitude is, you know, Go ahead and, and, and so you, you can't even complain to the county attorney because the county attorney is the attorney for the county, even though he's also the criminal prosecutor. There's a terrible conflict of interest. So you have to understand that Uncle Scam at the national level is not your only enemy. He's not the only person who should be the subject of your outrage. It should be the state. It should be the local. It should be all these people who ask you to pay for things it is that you're entitled to. One of my favorites is how can you have to pay to license a vehicle to drive on roads you paid for that you have a constitutional right to travel? But there's none of that if you walk on that road or if you ride a horse on that road or if you ride a bicycle on that uh, road. The only reason that states tax these things is because they can. It's, it's a big extortion game. And most of the money that they bring in through these fees, like motor vehicle licensing, just pays for the bureaucracy to create a lot of uh, bureaucrats. It doesn't, it's not really necessary. The police don't need to have a tag on your car that they can warrantly search your car. If you've committed some infraction, they can pull you over, ask who you are at that point in time. You could show other identification. The driver's licenses aren't necessary. Registration of cars isn't necessary. It's just another scam for the state to steal money from you. Because the state is absolutely in league with the banking establishment. And the biggest thing that the state and the government want is for you not to be wealthy, for you not to be successful, for you not to be a millionaire or billionaire, that you can challenge the existing order of corruption in this country. They want to keep it that the only thing it is that you have is your voice and that you're afraid to use that because you're afraid you'll lose your job or whatever. One last thing I want to get to before we get off today, we, we've got two minutes left. There's a great story today about how it now costs $241,000 to raise a child in the United States on average. And then I saw that and I thought to myself, I want to do something on tonight's show that almost no one in public life or on radio or in politics or any place else ever does, which is to tell people, if you cannot afford $241,000, if you can't afford $100,000 or $50,000, do not have children. Having children isn't right. I, I've uh, been married twice only have one child. No particular reason. Uh, I probably spent $50,000 raising the one child, probably $300,000 if I count the custody lawsuits with his grandparents when my first wife died of cancer. But I could frankly afford it. 
the, the thing that people don't look at a child a rearing is people who want to have many children want to have many children that somebody else will pay for. And this is the ultimate act of statism and socialism to say, I'm going to have as many children as I want, and I'm going to shift the cost of that to others. Have as many children as you can afford to send to private school. That's all I've got to say for tonight. Hey, I'm Mike Told Woody O'Brien, investment newsletter writer. Check me out at WoodyKnowsMarkets.com. I'm the only Woody O'Brien on Facebook, so please friend me there. Send a comment or a question there. And, of course, my life's work, AbolishFiatSlavery.com. Great to be with you again. We will be here next week, next Wednesday at 9 p.m. Eastern Time, 6 p.m. on the coast. This is the Rents Radio Network and Wide Awake News. Thanks for being with me. A little red cover with a broken spine on the back He hand wrote a quote inside When the rich wage war, it's the poor who die Meanwhile, the leader just talks away Stuttering and mumbling the night the news to a play The rest of the world watching at the end of the day Both scared and angry like, what did he say? In 2007, one man, Mike Dillard, made five predictions which forecasted the 2008 economic crisis and the pending Eurozone collapse. Three brand new, shocking, must-watch videos with predictions for the coming year. www.the3videos.com Over the past year, Mike Dillard has helped thousands of ordinary people create and recover wealth by tapping into the black box investing strategies the big banks don't want you to know about. www.the3videos.com as the European banking system implodes and governments collapse at breakneck speeds, the next 12 months will be the most anticipated and important months in modern human history. This will make 2008 look like a walk in the park. Everyone will be affected. Go to www.the3videos.com now. Learn how to prepare your family and prosper during the global financial collapse. Liberty Coin and Precious Metals is one of the fastest growing gold sellers in the country. And as one of their customers, I know why. They simplify the process of buying coins and precious metals. No hidden fees, no hard sell, no mystery. Just great prices. In fact, some of the best in the nation. And they post their buy and sell prices on the web and in their stores. I value that transparency. And Liberty's experts took the time to get to know me and my investment needs. And they're serious about privacy. There are so many reasons I'm now a Liberty Coin and Precious Metals customer, but the most important is I trust Liberty. Call Liberty Coin and Precious Metals, 877-511-COIN. That's 877-511-COIN. Or on the web at libertycpm.com. Liberty. You're listening to the Rents Radio Network, nationwide and worldwide on the net and at rents.com. Hi, y'all, Rand, USA.